talk a little bit about the Happy Days of Musical, how it all came together, what you're proud of, and what you're really, really excited about. This is Milwaukee, after all, Paul. No, you know, if Happy Days doesn't play well in Milwaukee, it's not going to play well anywhere in the world. It started with a phone call from Gary Marshall, and, you know, I've known Gary for for 40 years, 35 years, but I should never say you know anybody that long, but <laughs> but uh, worked with Gary back in the 70s, and he said, you know, I, listen, this is really where, we did an, I did an odd couple for him, and he produced, and he said, we need to do something fun together, well, I'll find us something, and just like that, 30 years later, he called me, <laughs> so it was like, wait a minute, or 25 years later. But he called about Happy Days, and he always thought that Happy Days would make a, a, a natural stage musical. And it was interesting because I had a, a, a reached a point in my life where I was kind of, I thought, maybe done with music. You know, I had, uh, you know, 18 years ago I got sober, started working as a drug and alcohol counselor, real active in recovery, playing a little golf, whatever. And I just fell in love with the process, writing the show. This has, has really lit the, lit the fires for me as far as writing again. I, this is the first of, at this point, what is now three musicals to come out of me. And uh, uh, writing for these characters is, is a, a great honor, but it's also an interesting challenge. For example, the hero, the font, is one of the most defended, guarded creatures in the world. I mean, he's A. He's all kind of keeping it all inside. But to write about what's going on inside him is, is, is a real challenge. And, and the, the basis of the story, which is about the, you know, on the surface, is about saving Arnold from being torn down for a mall. The fact is, the real story is about Fonzie watching the world go by him. And mm. he's kind of stuck in, in teen, sort of this sort of teen consciousness. And, uh, and him coming to terms with that. And that so that, that was exciting to write about. You know, there's a. There's a song in there called Aimless, you know, because it's your, it's your, whoa, the beginning of woe is me, is your A, just a nickname for Aimless. Um, and, you know, his, his, uh, his journey is, is about growing up and stepping up to the plate as a man in a relationship, a real relationship with Pinky Tuscadero. Uh, very right. exciting. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, are there... Are there songs in the musical other than the ones you've written? Are there, you know... Well, the, the, you know, the Happy Days theme song. Is okay. The, you know, okay. Happy Days theme song. Was With a new short. twist on it, but... Or well, you, you see it kind of appears as sort of a, as a haunting refrain, as an element in, in, uh, in uh, a couple places in, in the show. It's, uh, you know, it, it's the theme. It's the Happy Days theme. It was okay. written by Charles Fox and Norman Gimbel. It's a great song, and... And it's something that people have associated with Happy Days for 35 years or whatever. Charlie and I actually wrote uh, The Love Boat together, uh, which uh -huh. know, is, uh, was right after Happy Days. I think the next thing that he worked on, or he, he, he wrote the title song for Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley. The only one I ever caught with him was The Love Boat. And The Love Boat sailed for 11 years. And <laughs> it's still out there somewhere. And it's, you know, every time they play it, I get a little taste. Not a lot, but a little God, taste. That's well, good. It's what I call horizontal money. You're <laughs> laying in bed and you go, I love boat. Thank you, Lord. It's good to be working. You know. um, one of my favorite Christmas specials of all time is uh, John Denver and M Muppets of Christmas Together. You yeah. worked on that. Um, well, actually, he, he just, you know, I was friends with John and, and, and had worked with John, did his special in, in England. But that was actually. Uh, the the song that he sings in that the when the river meets the sea mm -hmm. is from a, a, a an HBO special that I did with the Muppets called Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Ah. Funny you should ask because Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas is currently playing at the Goodspeed Theater in Connecticut as a full blown musical. It's the second musical I've written mm. uh, since the beginnings of this Happy Days experience, which I keep picking up and showing. It's like you know, you gotta promote. <laughs> you gotta keep promoting. Them. Show them the title. Show them the title. <laughs> but yeah, so so uh, one of the songs from Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas huh. is When the River Meets the Sea, and, and John sang it beautifully with the Muppets. Okay, great. Of all the songs and all the stuff you've worked on in your career, is there a favorite song? You know, it's it's got to be Rainbow Connection. I mean, the Rainbow Connection has had a, an amazing life from current, writing it for, you know, writing the song for the opening of the Muppet movie. Kenny Asher and I were going, okay, we're gonna, this is going to be a, a movie about how the, the Muppets get together. We start out with Kermit in the, in the swamp. He finds out that, they, that they, they're looking for frogs that want to be rich and famous, so he goes to Hollywood. 
But in this first song, when you first find him, we wanted to show that, that this is every frog, like every man, this is every frog. This is the Jimmy Stewart of frogs. This is this is a thinking, feeling, you know, frog with an inner life. You figure you got water, you got light, you got you know, you got air. You're gonna have what refraction? You're gonna have rainbows. So it, when he starts singing, I love the first line of the song because it's, it tells us that you know that he not only thinks about weighty things. But he's also been to the movies. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? He knows about all those songs. I like the song because it's a song about questions instead of answers. You know, who says that every wish would be heard and answered if wished on the morning star? Somebody thought of that and someone believed it. Look what it's done so far. It is I think you know I, I believe that you know if you go back through Emmett Fox and Ernest Holmes and Emerson and, and various philosophers that our thoughts are prayers you know that what we think on what we what we think on we create you know so I think there's something of that philosophy in the in the song it's a it's a song about about finding that 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 mystery in life and and chasing it you know someday we'll find it the rainbow connection great beautiful well welcome again to Milwaukee come back whenever you want and we look forward to seeing happy days next month I appreciate it thanks for taking the time thanks Paul